Today's subject is creative options for sending docs to pipeline. Okay. Um, so really, we'll just dive into different ways to really maximize what you can get from utilizing your mail drop address and then some tips and tricks related to that that you um, that may be enlightening for you. Okay. Um, so to start off, I want to, of course, uh, talk about mail drop addresses. I'm not going to go deep into it. Um, although I, I am compelled to because they really do dr can drive how your office's workflow is um, or is, is set up. So, and I'm not, again, not gonna go into it. If you are interested in learning more about that, we did a whole webinar on that called, if you go head over to our webinar, webinar recordings page, it's called Workflow Tips for Unassigned Docs, okay? Um, and that'll, again, just tell you how to utilize uh, your mail drop addresses to maximize when information gets in, how it gets in, how you train your agents, et cetera. Okay, so head on over there if you've got questions about that. Today, we'll really just talk about, again, how to maximize using that, that mail drop address, different ways that you can use it creatively to get your information into the system. Okay, so mail drop addresses. First thing, you can, I, I want to sort of take the fear away from this uh, rather long, numbery uh, mail drop address because a lot of people will look at it and think, oh crap, I'm not, I can't keep typing that in there or it's too long or whatever. Um, I honestly don't know any office that types it for sure um, or even copies and pastes it regularly. Once you copy this message the first time and then paste it into your, um, wherever you're emailing from, whether it be your email system from your device, um, even via a, a text or SMS system uh, on your device, um, or another system, you usually paste it in there once, and the system will typically save that as a contact. So the next time you need to reference it, uh, you do it with just you know typing a couple letters or looking it up, et cetera. Um, so again, don't typically see people copying and pasting this all the time. You do it once to the main place that you're mailing from or the few places you're mailing from. And, um, and from there, you're just referencing it with just a click or two, okay? So no fear there. It's really just a, a, an identifier for the system to know that uh, it is your unique e email address um, for your working docs, or your, excuse me, your unassigned docs, or your specific transaction mail drop address for your transaction, okay? Okay, so that said, with that background about how you can set your mail drop addresses as contacts, there are a few different places where you can reference those com contacts. And I uh, kind of alluded to them a moment ago. The first is, I wanna mention is a scanner, right? If your office uses a scanner to send docs into pipeline or to, um, um, to scan docs, most scanners will allow you to specify um, an email address or e multiple email addresses to send docs to. And if that's the case, you can set up your users, your, um, your staff and, and agents into the scanner with their own unique unassigned docs mail drop addresses. That way, whenever they're scanning something into uh, the scanner, they can um, identify themselves and it'll go directly to their own mail drop address. Okay, so scanners are huge and helpful if you've got, if you can program those. All right, the next I mentioned uh, briefly was if you've got a device, your phone or what have you, um, and you send text messages. Um, or however you send from your device, whether it's email or text message, et cetera. Um, super easy, let's say, if you're using a, a text message and you wanna snap a quick picture of a particular property or a part of it, et cetera, to text that to your mail drop address, right? Um, and again, it'll be saved as a contact, so um, you can type a few letters, it comes up, and you're instantly sending that image or whatever doc to your system. Um, if it's an image, you want to be sure that your account is set up to um, allow to, to uh, allow more than PDFs. If you've got it set to only allow PDFs, then obviously images will not be able to come through. So that's something to keep in mind. But again, you can uh, forward those uh, images or if they're PDF docs or whatever you have on your device to the system that way. Okay. Another uh, place that you can send docs via the mail drop address is other systems. Let's say you're using an, um, an e-sign system uh, and you want to send a, a, an executed doc to pipeline. Um, as long as that system supports sending attachments um, through email, you can spe uh, specify that mail drop address in that system to, to send to, okay? 
you just want to be sure that it's sending an actual attachment and not just a link. If it sends a link to the doc, that's not going to work. The um, pipeline will only receive docs as attachments. Okay. And the last one and the biggie uh, from which to send uh, docs um, via email to the system is just your regular email system from your laptop or what have you. Um, and let me head on over and open one of those here. So if I'm sending a message, say, from um, my email system and I want to send it to my mail drop address, um, I can type what it's named, right? My, we used to call an assigned docs working docs, so it still remembers it from that. But you know, this one's named Montas Working Docs Mail Drop Address. So I can type Monta, I can type Working Docs, etc., and instantly come up with that mail drop address and then send something to it. Okay, so again, never actually typing or even remembering that number. Um, I can also, if it, let's say it's for my transaction mail drop address, I can just start typing the name of the property, right? Um, and then it finds it that way. Okay, They're super easy to send um, to your mail drop addresses just using those contacts. Um, another benefit, um, thank you Hollis, who is a, a, found this and is a huge advocate of forwarding multiple messages um, to the system. Let me open a separate window here, right? So if I've got, let's say, a ton of messages, maybe all of these, maybe some more, right? And I want to forward all of these at the same time to the uh, to Pipeline, um, there is an extension uh, called Cloud HQ, not related to Pipeline, but it has worked really uh, usefully for this purpose. Um, and if you go to, to find it, you go to your, um, to your uh, Google, if you use Chrome, the Chrome store and look for Cloud HQ, and then it'll allow you to um, upload it as an extension. Once it's uploaded and you select the different, um, the different uh, messages that you want to be forwarded, you'll see this little arrow here, multi-email forward, right? And here you've got some very cool options. You can forward uh, the selected emails individually you can merge them into the single body of uh, to, into the body of a single message. Um, you can even attach them all as a single PDF attachment, which is really, really useful. Okay, so lots of very appropriate options to get your uh, messages really cleanly into the system at once. Some people, so some offices will forward the messages individually as they come in, but some like to do it all at the end um, as one big transfer. Okay. And so that's it sort of when you talk about the logistics of how to get those in and get them in from different places and get them in creatively. Uh, I wanted to also go over some useful information, helpful information that relates to all of these. Um, the first is how pipeline handles, atta handles attachments. Actually, all of it's related to how it handles attachments. Um, a lot of times uh, when you're sending messages or receiving messages or forwarding them, they'll have signatures attached to them, the realtor signatures. And a lot of those, um, uh, uh, well, actually, sometimes I'll just have text, text signatures, but sometimes I'll have attachments. And so since you're forwarding documents into the system, those are actually attached docs. The system, though, is smart enough to know that if they're small enough, they're considered signatures and they'll be ignored. That way you're not getting a bunch of signatures in your unassigned docs area or um, on the transaction when you're actually sending those in, okay? So it smartly ignores those. Also, if you are um, sending in docs, note that there is a size limit. So you can email docs into the system that are up to 25 megabytes per email, right? Um, and that's into either a transaction or unassigned docs. Anything larger than that would need to be uploaded manually directly into the system using the upload feature, okay? And for that, doing it that way, you can upload up to 150 megabyte um, documents. Okay. Um, also, I mentioned a, a moment ago that, let's go back over here. Um, you, if you've got under admin settings, if you've got the system set to only allow PDFs, it'll only allow PDF documents. Um, if that is not checked, you can receive documents of any type with the exception of text docs. Text docs cannot be received by the system. But again, any other type as long as that's not checked. That can be JPEGs, whatever. All right. Um, also, whenever docs are sent in the, into the system, there are some notifications that happen. If under your personal profile as an admin, if you're an admin, 
Um, you've elected to be notified whenever an agent adds a doc to a transaction. If you've got that checked, you'll be automatically, uh, you'll automatically get an email whenever a, an agent adds a doc to a transaction. Okay, so that's helpful just from a um, information standpoint. Um, also, anyone, ad admins or agents, if you've got this option here to receive email acknowledgement whenever you send a doc into your mail drop address, that can be useful information, particularly if you're attaching a doc to a, uh, a message that you're sending and that doc gets rejected for some reason. And some of the reasons it can get rejected are it could be a duplicate of a doc that's already there. Um, you could have sent a, a message to a message to unassigned docs that didn't actually have an attachment. And since that's specifically, since unassigned docs is specifically designed to receive docs, it knows that if there is no attachment, that must be an error, so it'll reject it. Um, letting you know that there was no doc attached, et cetera. So having that notification on there so that you know if something was rejected instead of assuming that it went on in there um, can be helpful, okay? Um, and the last thing is just what I mentioned briefly a moment ago, and that is in general, whenever you're sending a, a, a doc to the system, whether it's v to unassigned docs or to a transaction, it must be an actual doc attached to the, to the message. It cannot be a link that you're sending. Sometimes uh, you'll receive a message that has a link to a doc. And you'll think that if you forward it, you forwarded um, the doc onto the transaction or to the uh, to unassigned docs, but that's not the case. It must be a, an actual physical, physically attached doc. Okay. And that is it for today. <laughs>